The Freestyle Libre 3 CGM. I've worn it and I'm here to tell you everything that I experienced all about its app, the build, uh, and the accuracy and alerts. So uh, before I do, I'm Justin. This is Diabetech. On here, I talk all things diabetes tech, news, and management. I've also got a podcast that goes on every Monday. But today's episode is all about this little thing, this tiny little CGM, in fact, probably the smallest one uh, that is worn externally. And I've worn it twice. It lasts 14 days, so I wore it months ago. And then I just recently finished wearing this one. And I'm here to tell you everything about that experience. Also, make sure you check out some of my other content on the Libre 3. I compared it to the Dexcom G7, and I also interviewed Abbott all about the future of the Libre 2 and Libre 3 sensors with closed loop systems. Both of those are on this YouTube channel, so check those out. I am not a doctor. Nothing you hear on this episode, my YouTube channel or social media podcast, uh, should be considered medical advice. You should always consult with your physician before making changes to your health care. That said, this is my experience wearing the Libre 3, and I'm so excited to share it with you. Today's episode is sponsored by SugarPixel, the CGM reading display. More on that in a bit. First, can we talk about like how small this thing is? It is the size of two stacked pennies. This is what it looks like next to the Dexcom G7. The Dexcom G7 is 60% smaller than the G6, which many of you may be wearing that one. So just imagine how much smaller this one is than the G6. Now, in order to put the Libre 3 on, you use an applicator. The applicator is very similar to what's used with the Dexcom G7. You just push it down and then it inserts into your skin. It also inserts it at a 90 degree angle, similar to the Dexcom G7. The two times that I've put this on zero pain so I didn't have any issues with a singing I found with the g6 that that would happen probably 15% of the time on the Libre 3 there is a 60 minute warm-up now get this the Libre 3 can be worn for 14 days whether or not it stays on that long that's another story I'll get into that later in this video. What may be the most significant upgrade with the Libre 3 is data is sent to your phone every minute. That means you're gonna have glucose data five times faster than uh, the Dexcom sensors. Right off the bat, the Libre 3 isn't going to be for everyone. Why? Because it doesn't yet support a closed loop system. Libre 3 and the Libre 2 are both cleared for closed loop systems, which is fantastic. I get into that in my interview Review with Abbott, which you got to check out that that I'll put a link down to in the description. I'll also throw a card up in the corner. It's exciting to see that more CGMs are coming to closed loop, creating more competition. There's also the Dexcom G7, which will be coming eventually, but that one's not FDA cleared. So that may take a significant amount of time considering the Libre 3 and 2 are cleared and they're still not here. Let's get into wearing this. It is so freaking small. Like, I already don't realize my Dexcom G7, which is right here, but the Libre 3 even more so. Like, I have no idea it's there. And I think because it's so thin, it it doesn't get caught on things. Whereas my Dexcom G7, in fact, I find that it is able to get caught on things almost more than the G6 because of the way it's built. It's a little more catchy. That said, I've really only had a G7 fall off twice because it got caught in a door and while I was trapezing. That said, I did find over a long period of time that sweat and swimming would work away the adhesive. It is day number four of wearing the Libre 3. And what I noticed is there is a little bit of the edge coming up. We are in sunny Los Angeles. So far, it has been eight days wearing Libre 3 and check it out. It definitely is coming off a teeny bit around the sides. And then check out my G7. So the G7's been wearing for seven days and it's also coming up a little bit around the sides. Okay, this just in, we're still on day eight, I think. And I just jumped in the pool and look what happened. So <laughs> the Libre 3 officially has come off. And um, I guess what I would have needed was an overlay patch, but good to know. I, um, I feel like the Dexcom G7 tends to do a bit better even in the, the full 10 days. Um, speaking of my G7, my G7 actually did fall off, but it got clipped in the car, which is like a total diabetes total thing. Total different so, kind of casualty. All right. 
whatever. Um, back to the review. It didn't last the full 14 days. It lasted eight days, but with an adhesive patch like Skin Grip, I know for sure that that thing would have stayed on those extra six days. Um, but it is unfortunate that that was needed because I do find that with the G7, at least, at least for my skin, everyone's skin is different. It stays on the full 10 days. Before we get to accuracy, which I know you're all dying to hear about, let's hear a word from our sponsor. Today's video sponsor is from one of my favorite devices, and that is Sugar Pixel. I've also got one back there. This LED display uses Wi-Fi to connect to continuous glucose monitors to display blood sugar levels. Sugar Pixel gets readings from Dexcom G6, G7, Freestyle Libre 3, or Night Scout, and can display and alert for up to two CGM users. You can set a ton of different screens, from a big glucose reading, the rate of change, emojis with messages, an entire screen color, or more. Along the bottom, it even shows you how many minutes are left until your next reading. Sugar Pixel also has optional audio alerts, which can be configured on the Bluetooth app. There's a snooze button right on top. Every device comes with a vibrating puck that can be placed under your sheets, which is great for those who are hard of hearing. On the app, you can set target ranges, alerts, display screens, screen brightness, and night mode and quiet hours for when alerts won't go off. To learn more about Sugar Pixel and grab one for yourself, check out that link in the description. Back to the episode. Let's talk accuracy. I wore the Dexcom G7 side by side with the Libre 3, uh, and I found that accuracy was very good. I would test myself with a glucometer, and the numbers were very on par. So we're two days in, and my numbers with the Libre 3 have been pretty consistent with what I'm seeing on Dexcom. So first you got Dexcom, that is what the screen looks like. Let's show you right there, can you see that? So we're going from that to that. I mean, they're very similar. I think this one, the Libre 3 says 138 and the Dexcom G7 says 149. I even did this time-lapse video. I had the Dexcom readings on top of my Sugar Pixel and then my Libre 3 readings on the tidbit uh, below it. And look at that. I mean, they're very on par. There are moments where they're kind of off by a, a good amount, but then they get to each other. And ultimately, we're wearing CGMs to learn about the foods we're eating, see incredible rises or drops, and that's the main information. Numbers are never gonna be exact, but as long as we're learning from, the, from that information, and as long as we're able to make decisions, crucial decisions based on those rises and drops in those moments, that's what's important. I did some more investigating between the Dexcom and the Libre. I kept an eye on graphs to see how those looked. And I continued to look at these graphs and they were very on par for the most part all the time. And with my Apple Watch, I was able to put my Libre 3 numbers on it, which I'll get into a little later in this. There's also a whole video on it that I made on YouTube, but I was able to have them side by side. And most of the time when I checked my blood sugar on my watch, they were on par. In fact, there was even one time where they were exactly the same. There has been a lot of talk about there being less accuracy with the Libre 3 when it comes to lower numbers, which is a bit scary, right? Because going low is scary. Uh, but I didn't have those issues. I found that it was able to notify me when I needed to be notified. But again, I've only worn the Libre 3 two times. And the second time it only lasted eight days. The first time it lasted 14 days, by the way. But I wasn't swimming and I wasn't really sweating a ton. I did notice one compression low or what I thought was a compression low. It was a, it was a false low at night and I was laying on my side. So the odds are that the Libre 3 was getting a compression low. That was the only one that I got in those eight days. Ever, besides that, I didn't have any false lows. Now let's get into the app because there was so much here. The app for Libre 3 is very similar to what you get from the Dexcom Clarity app. There is so much information when it comes to graphs and understanding your sugar levels over a long period of time, your time in range. And I really liked the fact that there was all of this information right in the main application, whereas the Dexcom, uh, for G6, you have to go to Clarity to get that information. And with the G7, there is some Clarity information, but not nearly as much as the Libre 3 has right on that app. With that said, the Libre 3 is much more limited when it comes to 
your alert settings. You can't go in and change the chimes and change the volume of it. I did ask Abbott about that in that interview with them, and they said that could be coming on the horizon and I'll definitely make like an update video for Libre 3 when that happens. But for now, you're not getting that stuff. You can't make schedules for certain times of the day to have louder or louder alerts, which the Dexcom G7 does and I really like about it. If you want to learn more about the Dexcom G7, by the way, I've got a review on this channel already after one month of wearing it and I've got a six month wearing it coming out very soon. One of my little nitpicky notes for the app is uh, that you can't change the hour view. It only shows you, I believe, a 24-hour or actually, no, a 12-hour view, whereas on the Dexcom apps, you can do like 3, 6, 12, and 24. You also can't skim your finger along the graph to like see the numbers, which is funny because there is like a follow app called Libre Link Up uh, for the Libre 3 and 2. And on that app, someone who's following your levels, they can do that. So it makes no sense to me that that doesn't exist on the main application. And I can only imagine that they are going to bring that feature out in the future. One thing that was definitely missing with alerts was the fact that you can't put on like a vibrate mode. That's something I really love about the Dexcom G7 is I can put on a silence or vibrate mode for a certain amount of time. So when I'm in a movie or going to see a Broadway show, I'll only get a vibrate. Also, when it comes to the Apple Watch, there is no Libre 3 app, which is kind of annoying because Dexcom has it and I don't see why... Libre 3 doesn't have it, or Libre 2 for that matter. I did figure out a way to get my readings on there. I'll get into that in a second. But one thing you do get is you will get push notifications on an Apple Watch or an Android app or, or an Android watch or probably like Garmin's, Fitbits, things like that. I think anything that gets push notifications from your phone will receive those uh, that information, those alerts from your Libre. But still, being able to go to an app and kind of see your trajectory and where it's going um, would be nice, but it's also a blessing and a curse because sometimes you get uh, way too wrapped into it. In fact, I haven't really been wearing my Apple Watch a lot because... I tend to do that, and I've been living in the moment a bit more. Before I close out this video, I want to tell you a little bit about how I got my Libre 3 numbers on my watch, but also on those devices behind me. Now, I put out a whole video, a how-to to do it, so you'll have to check that out. But basically what I did was I used a few different applications, all free, to generate a link that can then be used on an app that lives on your iPhone and Apple Watch called Night Guard. And then um, the Sugar Pixel app itself has the ability to put this link. And then Tidbit also has an app where you can put that link. I've got videos on both of those devices, interviews with the creators. I've also got that video on how to do the numbers for the watch. And it goes for those devices as well. So if you want to get your Libre numbers on any device that takes this like Night Scout link, you'll be able to with that video. Overall, I've got to say, I enjoyed my Libre 3 experience. It's super small. I found the accuracy to be great. I probably want to wear it longer to fully understand if that's something that is consistent over a long period of time or certain areas of wearing it. And I found that the app was super intuitive. I do have some notes, but it was cool that it had all of that detailed information in it. Plus, with my hacks of getting it on the watch or getting it on my screens, it felt very on par with something like the Dexcom G7. And in fact, the Libre CGMs are known to be less expensive and they last longer. So who would I recommend this for? I'm not a doctor, but this could be for someone who has type 2. These could be for someone who's on MDI, multiple daily injections, and just wants that number. This could be great for someone who's on a smart in pen by Medtronic, which I've reported on, uh, which just takes those sugar readings and tells you how much insulin to put on, to put in. Uh, you just plug in the number. You could plug in the Libre numbers. And then this will eventually be a fantastic option for people who are on closed loop. And Tandem and Omnipod have both announced that they're bringing the Libre 2 to their systems and that eventually the Libre 3 will also come. Who knows how long that's going to take, but it will be coming. Also, in my interview with Abbott, I learned a few things about the Libre 2 and 3 sensors. They have updated sensors. Libre 2 used to require scanning. It won't require scanning for closed loop. Now, both of the devices, including Libre 3, will be 15-day wear, uh, and for those two years and older, so they're opening up 
who this is for, for people like me, uh, or if you're on closed loop, I can't recommend this yet unless you want to get out of that loop. The treatment's just not going to be as good when you're not in closed loop. But the future is super bright for this little thing. And I'm excited to see where things go with this. And I'll definitely be reporting on any news that comes out. So you'll have to subscribe to this channel and there's a bell down there. If you want to click that, you'll get alerted as soon as my videos come out. I've got videos on Fridays here on YouTube. And I also have my podcast where I interview CEOs, tech leaders, diabetes educators, and people with diabetes. That comes out every Monday, both on YouTube in video form, but also on all major podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Amazon, Google, you name it it is there. Uh, check out the podcast and be sure to like this video so people find it. I hope you enjoyed it. It's probably a bit long, but I put in as much information about this as I can. I'm going to put links to all of my other Libre 3 content and my Dexcom G7 reviews as well in the description and up on the screen now. So you can just click those and oh my God, that one's really good. You got to check that one out. All right. I'm Justin and I'll take you later.